I'm April Martin and my presentation is on chapter five, small business, entrepreneurship, and franchise. I'm going to be using my own personal business model to open a bike rental business to go over the steps that any entrepreneur needs to take in order to open their own small business. So first things first, you gotta have a business plan. Business plans are essentially your roadmap to what your plans for your business are. And your business plan is what you will use as a guide slash outline to present to future investors and other people that would you may need assistance from in order to get to getting your business up and going. Next, we're going to talk about licensing. There are multiple options for business owners to become a legal entity. I have personally chosen to become an LLC, which stands for a limited liability company. Obtaining an LLC is a relatively easy process. All you have to do is electronically submit a form to the North Carolina State Secretary's Office. In five to seven days, you'll receive status of your entity via email. And then once the North Carolina Secretary of State approves your business name, then you can go ahead and start using your business name in marketing and advertising purposes. There are some fees associated with becoming an LLC. Um, it's $125 for the articles of organization. If you would like to reserve your company name, that's an additional $10. And every year, there's a $200 fee for the annual reports filing. Next, an EIN needs to be obtained. An EIN is an um, employee identification number, and it's basically the IRS's golden ticket into your company slash business in order to tax you. Having an EIN is great because, as I mentioned before, I want to keep my personal assets separate from my business assets. So this way, my business can be taxed separate than my personal income earnings. Next, you have to identify your target market. The North Topsail Chamber of Commerce projects that over 61,000 tourists will flock to the island this summer. So, boom, tourists, target market. Now that we've identified who the target market is, next is competition research. So you gotta do competition research. This involves going online, checking out websites, checking out prices, is there online booking? Do they offer specials? Are there packages? And also, you can't just assume everyone's online, especially in sort of a up and coming town like this that is not necessarily the most technologically savvy. A lot of time there's in-person research too. And it's just a matter of getting in your car and driving up and down and seeing what's out there. Now let's talk about location. Location is key and it can make or break a business. If you choose a location that it's hard for your your customers to come and get to, then more than likely your business isn't gonna do so great. So location is key. Some things that come along with location are business venues, do you need to rent a building, do you need to, and then if you rent a, a building, is it already up to code? Do you need to bring it up to code? So there are lots of things that go into picking out a location. Do you also have the option that I have chosen, which is to try to negotiate with already established business owners and rent out through their business, at least in the first couple of years until you make enough profit to reinvest in your own building, in your own personal location. Next, let's talk inventory. Will your business need an inventory? I know my business well, so for a bike rental company, what I will need to do is obviously invest in a fleet of bikes, I'm also going to need repair parts, I'm going to need helmets, I'm going to need bike accessories. So there are all of these things that I need to take into account for costs of startup in order to make this happen. But inventory is very important. It's good to write everything down and to constantly check your list and to make edits as you go. So lots of things pop up when you're trying to open up your own business. Lots of fees, lots of legalities, lots of permits. Some miscellaneous fees and some miscellaneous investing and costs that I have considered in opening this business are lawyer fees. I'm going to have to meet up with a lawyer in order to dry up liability papers. Um, licensing, you know, the LLC fees. There are local permits that I need to still obtain. There is insurance that I need to have taken out on myself and my business and my inventory. 
So there are lots of things to consider and this is really where your business plan comes into play in mapping everything out for yourself. It's also very important to budget for advertising and marketing because let's face it, if people don't know you're there, people won't come. Let's discuss calculating your future earning potential. This is the part of your business plan that future investors are definitely going to be looking at very, very closely. Once you've gathered all of your data, consider using a visual in order to share your findings. I personally will be using a bar graph in order to communicate the data of my potential future earnings. And then that way in a bar graph, I can also show projected future growth and potential growth by just using different colored bars. Another thing to consider when calculating your future potential earnings is to do a five-year projection. How do you plan on growing? Investors wanna know that you're gonna be around for a long time and that their investment is gonna continue to make them money well into the future. Now let's talk about financing a small business. The good news is, is that there are tons of lenders out there just waiting to give a small business a chance. However, the bad side of that is if you don't have the best credit and if you don't have a lot of equity to put down and to invest into your business, they may not be willing to give you the money that you need to start your business just because they may not necessarily trust or believe that you will be able to return their money back and that they'll get a return profit. That being said, if you find yourself in a situation similar to that, there are other options. The SBA or the Small Business Administration through the government works with lots of lenders and they set tons of guidelines to sort of make things even the playing field for first time business owners and for lenders. And it sort of protects everybody. So it reduces the risk for the lenders and it also provides small business owners with the opportunity to receive funding to get their business up and going. So as a future entrepreneur, I definitely have my work cut out for me. If you're willing to put in the work, opening a small business can be so rewarding and offer you so many more opportunities than working for an employer can. So here's to opening my rental bike company in spring 2019. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.